Hi, in this video, we're going to be, this series of videos, we're going to be working through a GCSE paper. Please do stop the video, have a go at each of the questions, then compare your solutions. Each of the videos is going to be about 20, 30 minutes or so. It should give you about an hour's worth of fairly focused revision. If you're not sure about anything, always add a comment. I'll come back to you and I'll look forward to seeing you inside the video. Hi, this is the second video in the series where we're looking at the November 2018 Maths Paper 3 Foundation Tier 4 at Excel. In the previous video we completed through to question number 15. In this video we're going to start from question number 16 onwards. Okay, so here we are at uh, question number 16. It says write down the ratio of 450 grams to 15 grams in its simplest form. So really what we've got is 450 to 15 and we're looking at making that as small as we possibly can. Now if I divide the right hand side by 15 that's going to equal 1 and if I divide this side by 15 that's going to equal 30. Therefore the simplest form of this particular ratio is going to be 30 to 1 and that would be the answer to question number 16. OK, let's move on then to question number 17. And it says the diagram has a pentagon. The pentagon has one line of symmetry. OK, the important thing there is one line of symmetry, which is basically the line that goes right through the middle there. OK, and then it says A to E is going to be 4X. Well, that's going to be this one at the bottom here. OK, and then I've got A to B, which is 2x plus 1. Now, don't forget, if A to B is 2x plus 1, it also means that D to E is 2x plus 1 because it's a symmetrical object. And the same goes for B to C. Well, that's going to be x plus 2, but also C to D is going to be x plus 2 as well. And that's the point, really, of having this line of symmetry to give you that information. And then it says the perimeter of the pentagon is uh, 18 centimetres and all the measurements are given in centimetres. Then it says show that. And this is one of those questions where you've got to kind of work your way around, really. So show that the um, this formula is true, then therefore we've got to look at the perimeter first. OK, so let's have a look at all of the perimeter um, equations or expressions. So therefore I'm going to start with A and I'm going to work my way around each of these, adding them all up as I go, which is the perimeter of that particular shape. So I'm going to write it up on the screen as going to be 2x plus 1 and that's going to be plus x plus 2 and that's going to be plus x plus 2 again, which is the other side, and then plus 2x plus 1 plus 4x, which is all of those outside expressions, and that should equal 18. OK, when I gather up the like terms, I put all of the x's together, what I end up with is going to be 10x, and when I put all the numbers on the left-hand side together, I get positive 6 and that's going to equal to 18. Therefore, I've clearly, or I've shown that 10x plus 6 equals 18. And then really, it's just a case of solving that for x and finding the value of x, which is part b of the question. So therefore, I've got 10x plus 18. Uh, sorry, 10x plus 6 equals 18. I'm going to take 6 away from both sides, and I'm going to get 10x equals 12, and then I'm going to divide through by 10, both sides, and I'm going to get x equals 1.2, so therefore the value of x is 1.2 for part B of that particular question. I'll just go back and put it on the screen, but please do download this particular paper and have a go at these questions for yourself. OK, let's move on then to question number 18, which is all about Trevor buying a boat. OK, the cost of the boat is that, plus VAT at 20%. OK, now I'm going to stop there because what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to work out this bit of information here. Now, bearing in mind, it is a calculator to paper. So it's not too difficult because what we're saying is it's 14,200 plus 20%. What does that equal? Well, it's the same as saying 14,200 multiplied by 1.2. You can do it that way or you can do 10% 
double it and then add it to 4,200. doesn't really matter. Hopefully you'll get an answer of 17,040, which is the total amount of money that Trevor pays. Okay, he pays a deposit then of £5,000, which is the next part of this. Okay, so therefore, 17,040, take away £5,000 is going to equal 12,040. And that he pays in 10 equal payments, which is this bit here. So I'm going to take my 12,040 and now I'm going to divide it by 10. OK, because it's 10 equal payments and, and that's going to equal 1,204 pounds and then zero pence. OK, I've had an extra zero there because we normally have two zeros after the decimal point when we're talking about numbers. OK, or talking about pounds. So therefore, the amount that he's going to pay every single month is going to be 1,204 pounds. And that would be the answer to that particular question. Okay, hopefully that's all right for you. Let's move on then to question number 19. On the number line, show the inequality. Numbers of x or the values of x are less than 4. So the way we do that is we say that all the values are going to be less than 4. Now you'll notice that I've left it as what they call an open circle. And that's because the values don't include Includes the value of 4. It's any value that's less than 4. So it could be 3, 2, 1, 0, minus 1, and so on. Okay, let's have a look then at part B of the question. It says y is less than or equal to 7, and it's also greater than 3. And it's also an integer, which basically we mean by integer a whole number. OK, write down the possible values of y. Well, the possible values of y would be a number that's greater than 3, but not equal to 3, is going to be 4. And then I can have 5, 6, and actually 7, because y could include 7. OK, let's move on then to part C, and it's a solving question. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to treat this a little bit like a linear equation. And what I'm going to do first um, is to get rid of the plus 5. So what I'm going to do is minus 5 from both sides. And I'm going to get 3x is greater than or equal to x, and it's not plus 17 now is actually going to be plus 12. And then what I'm going to do is get rid of the negative x or minus x from both sides because that gets rid of this one here. And that's going to be then 2x is greater than or equal to 12. And then I'm going to divide through by 2 because if I divide by 2 I'm going to get my finally my value of x which is greater than or equal to 6 which is the answer to part C of this particular question which is question number 19. Okay. If you're not sure, let me know in the comments. I do have some worksheets on this that I can uh, I can send over to you. Okay, so uh, 20a, write this number correct to three significant figures. Well, let's have a look at the third significant figure is a 5. And then the question is, does that 5 stay as a 5 or does it become a 6? Well, it actually is going to become a 6. Now, the reason it's going to become a 6 is because the number afterwards is actually more than 5. OK, so it's going to become 37360 because we're going to make sure we stay in the tens column. The 5 now has become a 6, but it's still in the tens column. OK, let's have a look at this one. Uh, be careful with these sorts of questions. Make sure that you use the fraction key um, and put it very carefully into your calculator. But it is two marks, but hopefully you're going to get an answer of 0 0.10779. 8, 1, 3, 5, 6, and it does say write down all the figures on your calculator display. It's worth it for two marks. Okay, last year Joe paid £245 for a car insurance. This year she paid this. Oh my gosh, that's a big increase. Okay, so how do we work out percentage increase? Well, percentage increase of anything is the difference 
divided by the original multiplied by a hundred so the difference between what she's paying now and what she paid last year is going to be 883 take away 245 divided by her original amount which was 245 pounds I'm going to multiply that by 100 to make it a percentage and I'm going to get a massive increase of 260.40816 dot 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 percent okay so poor Joe is having to now pay an increase to of 260 percent on her car insurance I think I would be quite upset okay <laughs> Let's move on then to question number 22. So they are getting a little bit more tricky. We're coming towards the sort of middle end of the paper now. And uh, I think what I'll do is I'll make this the very last question in this particular um, video. And then we'll complete the paper in the next video. Hopefully that's okay with you. So question number 22, complete the table of values. So what we're doing really is taking the values of x and we're putting it directly into the equation of y equals x squared plus x minus 4. Okay, now let's have a look at minus 3. So when x is minus 3, it's going to be minus 3. Be careful because minus 3 squared is the same as saying positive 9 because a negative times a negative is a positive. And it's probably why I tend to use brackets with these things because it just reminds me each time what I've got to do. So the value of y now is going to be 2. I know it's a calculator question but just be, you know, calculators are only as good as the input that you put into them. So just be a little bit cautious with it. Okay, the next one is going to be when x equals uh, 0. Well, when x equals 0, the value of y must be minus 4 because I've got 0 squared plus 0. Okay, let's have a look at the value of y when x equals 2. I've got y equals x squared plus x minus 4. And when x equals 2, I've got 2 squared plus 2 minus 4. And that's going to give us, again, 2. Okay, don't worry too much about this because this is actually going to be a curve line. Okay, let's have a look at finally the value of y when x equals 3. So I've got y equals x squared plus x minus 4. I'm going to have 3 squared plus 3 minus 4 and that's going to give us a value of 8. Okay, now just be careful with these. They are worth two marks. So it's well worthwhile having a go at each of these questions. Okay, and then it's really just a case of plotting those values onto the grid. So hopefully I'll do as good a job as I've got uh, on my notes here, but I'm just going to uh, work it through because I'm not entirely sure. I'm going to start with 0 minus 4 and then I've got 1 minus minus 2 which is going to be about uh, here okay and then I've got um, 2 2 well that's going to be 2 2 is going to be about 1 2 there okay and you can see as I'm doing this I'm trying to sort of make sure that I do it as neat as I possibly can so that's going to be 9, that's going to be 8. It's just a little bit trickier on the screen. OK, I've got minus 1, minus 4. Well, that's going to be over there. And then I've got minus 2, minus 2. Well, I can do that one. So that's minus 2, 1, 2 is the. And then I've got uh, minus 3 and then positive 2. So minus 3, positive 2 is going to be about there. OK, so I'm in a position then where I can actually draw this graph in. It's going to be a bit shaky because I'm using an iPad. It's not always the easiest thing to work with. OK, but that's my graph and hopefully yours will be very similar to that, but probably a lot neater. Now, the important thing about this is it says use the graph to estimate the solutions. So what we mean by the solutions, and sometimes you get it in various different ways. Sometimes it'll say something like uh, roots, the roots of the graph. Sometimes it'll just say solve. OK, but basically what we mean is, is the value of x when y equals 0. So it's where it cuts through 
these lines okay so if I just mark that up on the screen okay now the answer I've got here and it's it's uh, I'm taking it from my notes is the value of x is going to be either 1.6 or minus 2.6 now there is some variation with these um, so it won't matter too much if your graph differs a little bit from mine okay I hope that's been useful for you please do let me know in the comments if you're not sure about anything um, I can always send you uh, a playlist or some alternative videos and some alternative examples to have a look at and I look forward to seeing you inside the next video where we're going to start from question number 23